YouTube is one of the biggest and oldest video sharing platforms on the internet. Countless aspects of pop culture have developed and become popular in the world as a direct result of its influence and many celebrities alongside them. YouTube has gone on to not only create stars housed within itself, but also spark the careers of many outside it. In the early days, you had people like Justin Bieber, Jeff Dunham, and the creators of Fatal Farm to name a few. Each used their respective breakout hit on YouTube to cultivate something greater beyond the site. Today, however, the site has notoriously refined its criteria for what types of content are able to see exposure, and combined with the market becoming coming oversaturated, using YouTube to break into mainstream Hollywood or any other outlet for fame is practically impossible. And even for those who have already acquired fame on the site already, this has been an all but impossible task. When's the last time you've seen a modern day YouTuber break into Hollywood? Though this may also be attributed to YouTube's ever narrowing criteria. Low effort and often exploitive content is encouraged due to the quantity over quality algorithmic approach the site has taken in recent years. Content is now seen as being disposable and trendy, deprioritizing the type of content that was once able to propel its creators into stardom. Due to this, many channels based around high quality editing, animation, or original works of film often remain underrated or undiscovered entirely. But others are forced to change by trying to adapt their talents to the approach that works today, either by being trendy or cutting down the time consuming aspects of their work. Though lots of these channels never cross this threshold, or do and are still unable to grow. Plus, making this change is often seen as extremely controversial, leading these creators to often be seen as sellouts. In a way, this is YouTube's double-edged sword. Either solely embrace integrity in your craft and get nowhere, or abandon the best aspects of your content and have a chance of succeeding. But there's one channel who's inadvertently been caught in this dilemma by sheer happenstance, and unintentionally grown an infamous reputation as a result. In a way, he could be viewed as a victim of his own fame, a man caught in the crossfire of a war he never had a part in. This channel is known as Movie Unleashers. Run by Dane Prosnick, this channel specializes in cutout-based animation, often akin to South Park. The video topics parody a series of popular media, the most noteworthy being Pokemon, FNAF, Pixar, and Baldi's Basics. Though the choice of source material has often gotten him ridiculed and lumped in with other infamous parody channels like El Hugony or Futuristic Hub, but Dane's channel and content differs in a variety of ways, some not always obvious at first glance. Many make assumptions about the nature of his videos, but the truth behind it is far more different than many may imagine, and even tragic to some extent. Because it's a perfect example of what can occur when someone caring to produce quality content, whether doing so successfully or not, goes the route of doing so on a site which doesn't favor this approach, and nor does the potential audience. Dane created his channel on August 18th, 2008, and was 10 at the time. For the next several years, he would upload a variety of content, predominantly YouTube poops and skits he'd film with friends, although he'd been doing this since he was even younger on prior channels. He'd always had a passion for film and editing, by his own admission, and this was reflected in his earlier content. Surrender it. And who are they? In the failure is the biggest beast aliens on the galaxy. Hundreds of videos exist from this era, and their amateurish yet effortful nature makes it clear that it was created solely for fun. So, I made these old videos when I was a kid because, you know, you're a kid and you do fun things. I definitely made a whole lot of them. I would make YouTube poops, I would make Mario 64 bloopers, glitch videos, short sketches. Basically, I just copied what I saw on YouTube. And I mostly stopped because I lost all my friends and the friends that I did have at the time as well. They didn't want to make videos. And with the creation of what would become his biggest channel, Dane decided to switch his efforts over to a type of content that he could do single-handedly while still pursuing his passion in film. He chose to begin learning how to animate in order to bring his ideas to life and have as much control over the visuals as possible without relying on other people. Although it's worth noting that Dane's artistic skills when it comes to drawing are lacking. Plus, the animation style he chose was cutout based, akin to shows such as South Park, which was his original point of reference when selecting an animation method. Both of these factors have led to his work being prejudged as lazy or amateur, although it's worth noting that he was only 13 at the time, had little disposable income, and by Dane's own admission, he's not an artist and only started animating so he could learn to have a medium to adapt his scripts. I wasn't really a big fan of drawing or like even cartoons to begin with. I basically did most of these animations because I didn't have any friends to film videos for, so I would make these in my own time, and I didn't really care too much about how the drawing looked or how they how good the animation was i just kind of wanted the stories to get out and you can't really do a 40 minute animation 
that's frame by frame. And heck, I don't even like drawing, so I draw them once and then that's good enough for me, kind of thing. When first approaching animation in 2011, his first project was called A Christmas Thing, the pilot to a series called Starters, which parodied both Pokemon and South Park through its world and character design, but with an original story. His first approach to animating it was to use construction paper and create physical character models that he could move around. And by taking pictures with his camera, he could make basic stop motion. Although it would be two years before this animation was finished due to a life event that Dan alludes to in a video where he re-released the original stop motion construction paper shots. In 2013, however, he would return to this project and finish the remaining scenes using animation software instead. The finished version of this animation was renamed to Starter's Ditto Disaster, but a more noteworthy face value trait about this video is its runtime. Ditto Disaster is over 30 minutes in length, which for YouTube is nearly unheard of. The benefit to animating in the style he chose is that it's possible to achieve runtimes that would otherwise be impossible for the sake of being able to pull off long-form story driven content. In fact, it's also worth noting that in this video there's very little resemblance to Pokemon or South Park aside from the visual design. While it may present itself as a parody, the content it contains is wholly original. Rather than being a gimmicky parody that calls ridicule to aspects of the game franchise, Starters instead uses the Pokemon aesthetic to give visuals to Dane's original story. In a way, it's the same reason he doesn't emphasize the art element of his work. He just uses it as a medium to showcase his other skills. First off, I was a super big fan of Pokemon growing up. And I would always read a lot of fan fictions or even check DeviantArt and people would have their own Pokemon OCs. And I always thought that was pretty cool and, you know, it was kind of be wanting to be part of that community. I remember reading a pretty good fan fiction. I remember seeing an author note on it and it was basically saying the best way to showcase your work on the internet is if you attach a property to it. And I just kind of stuck by that. I'm like, okay, sure, parodies are the way to go, kind of thing. The following year, Dane would go on to create the second episode of Starters called Lavender Town, which he'd planned back in 2011 alongside the first. This time, upping the runtime to over 40 minutes and putting further emphasis on fleshing out the story. Uh, Lavender Town was kind of like a changing moment. I was very disappointed with Ditto Disaster. I d despised it when I made it. It was a mentally exhausting experience to make, and I absolutely hated that video, and I'm pretty still ashamed from it. And I basically just used Lavender Town to try to up myself and improve on my past mistakes. And even though Lavender Town isn't the greatest, it just goes to show you how big of an improvement I made from did a disaster to the next one. Dane would then create a third episode of Starters where he attempted to raise the bar again, increasing the runtime to over an hour and with a full new cast of characters, but decided to split the animation into two parts after realizing the workload he'd undertaken. Although, to fill time between episodes, Dane decided to create a short based off a brand new and unknown indie game at the time, known as Five Nights at Freddy's. And unbeknownst to him, this would prove to be his first of several bouts of success. This animation was released just short of a month after Markiplier's initial 2014 Let's Play, which shot the game into widespread popularity. At this time, it was too new for nearly any parody-based animators to tackle it yet, making Dane's filler video made on a whim one of the first animated parodies of the franchise, giving him a dedicated fanbase for the first time. Today, this video sits with over 10 million views, his most popular video at the time by far. It was more attention than he'd ever received, since his views on videos prior struggled to break 2,000, but it was on a project that had only taken a few days intended as a filler video between two other videos that had taken upwards of a year each, which to Dane was discomforting. But well, people seem to forget that that I was a pretty big fan of FNAF when it came out, and it, it was before the franchise was like being milked. Like if you look at the date of the video, it's actually dated as one of the earliest animations off the, based off the video game. Later, Dane finished up the second half of the third Starters episode, Typomaniac, and created two more Five Nights at Freddy's based parody animations afterwards, now under the series name Final Night. And like Starters, Dane attempted to flesh out the characters and the story, as well as increase the runtime with each. His goal was to put in as much effort as possible and turn what had started as a filler video into a series that he could be proud of to be his most viewed work. And also like Starters, the characters and events were almost entirely original, though he did try to make subtle ties with each new game so that the sequel would fit with its current source material. These two videos would succeed greatly and gain 9 million views each respectively. When you're 16 and a video takes off, of course you're going to make a sequel, and you're always going to try to outdo yourself in the sequel. I, I, I made the third one because I thought the game series was going to be a trilogy, and I wanted my stuff to be a trilogy, and I was actually getting pretty pissed off at all these FNAF milkers that, was, that were out at the time. So I made like a big like passive aggressive video shaming all the people doing like the FNAF milking. Uh, I didn't really work that well, but it was just kind of tying it up saying that, yeah, I'm aware that this stuff is going gone crazy and 
it was just a commentary on that. But in the wake of this, his starters episodes would also gain widespread attention as the algorithm began funneling them into the recommendation bar alongside his FNAF videos. So much so that his newfound starters fan base was beginning to rival that of Final Night. Views increased in a seemingly exponential rate, which prompted Dane to up his workload yet again, and started creating a fourth starters episode that would go on to surpass a 70 minute runtime. By this point, it had been almost a year since the release of Starters Episode 3 Part 2, and with these series paused for so long, comments asked asking Dane to make more started to overtake the channel, but this was nothing compared to the trouble that he was about to face. Following the third Final Night episode, Dane released a parody trailer for a PewDiePie movie intended to satirize both him and YouTube itself, but upon posting it, he was hit with a takedown notification for misleading metadata. Out of spite, Dane re-edited the trailer, removing direct references to PewDiePie with intentionally poor dubs over lines mentioning him. You can't lock me up, I've got my rights. We. Oui. Oh, you gameplay guy. My name is John. Whenever you say gameplay guy. I, I kind of knew why it got taken down was because people were, were mass reporting it because I did kind of criticize PewDiePie and his fan base in it. And the passive aggressive re-edit was basically saying, okay, I want to keep this up and, you know, I don't want PewDiePie attached to it because there's already an, enough bad vibes with him anyway. Yeah, I did it out of spite. This incident would come and go quickly, but would act as the start of a soon-to-be prominent trend. At this same time, Dane continued working on the next Starters episode, and once again decided to try tidying his audience over with a filler video. Very much akin to Dane's first FNAF parody, he released an animation based off of Inside Out, called Outside In. A short, quickly made, one-off parody. And like before, this one saw massive success, so much so that it became his most popular video, passing even his first FNAF parody, and reaching 13 million views in total. Although so this time, the reception was almost universally negative. Many criticized the video for both art style, animation quality, story, and pretty much every other aspect, and while Dane didn't disagree with a lot of what was being said, it was becoming abundantly clear that many of his viewers had only become acquainted with Dane's channel based on videos he'd whipped up to fill time between larger projects. It was around this point that Dane began to realize most knew him for the worst of his work, and as a result, he was starting to get compared to other channels like El Hugony and Futuristic Hub. His ties with the FNAF franchise seemed to only worsen this. Despite Despite the fact that when his videos on the topic were made, FNAF didn't even become popular and the stigma behind it didn't exist yet. Outside In was sadly just a filler video that I threw up and I didn't think anyone would watch it. It ended up becoming one of my most popular videos, which I'm still disappointed to this very day because I am personally ashamed of that video. It is horrible. I completely dis disown it. I want to delete it every single time it brings up into my memory. And yes, I'm still pretty criticized over that one video that I made when I was pretty, pretty young still. I just got out of high school. I didn't even know about there's this entire like genre of YouTube videos of like the pretending to be kid videos, the parody side of YouTube, like the modern parody area. I was only, I only knew it from like the new ground days when I grew up. So I didn't know there was like this big like underground community about parodies, modern day YouTube animated parodies being so low effort and just cash, cash grabs basically. And I, I wasn't doing, I, I wasn't trying to do it out of like cynical money grabbing. I was trying to make funny videos at the time. I think I have a little bit of an ego because I don't want to be lumped into that sum <laughs> because I don't. I don't want to make videos that are just throwaway appeal to nothing kind of things. I, I want to make good stuff. I, I, I want to make stuff that people can look back on. With each passing month, Dane became more and more fearful for both the image of himself and his channel. To make matters worse, just a few months later, his account was issued a strike for a video he posted on an old channel, a glitch which to this day is still unexplained. Guess what? I got a copyright strike for a video that the Movie Unleashers channel isn't responsible for uploading. Why did this happen on Movie Unleashers? Movie Unleashers didn't even exist when this was uploaded. Does strikes really affect every single account you've ever made? While innocuous now, this only further compounded upon the paranoia he'd started to feel. But in the short term, this had an unforeseen consequence. Due to YouTube's restrictions after uploading on a channel after receiving one strike, Dane would be barred from uploading videos over 15 minutes for the next three months, forcing him to release his next starters episode in segments for a total of six parts. Well, first off, that YouTube strike came from a video that wasn't even on my channel at the time. I mean, yeah, I was pretty fearful of YouTube. I was also d very disappointed because I was going to post my starters video pretty quick. 
it was out in the rain and I was working on that for months and I hated the idea of trying to put it up in parts because I wasn't allowed videos over 15 minutes and I didn't want it to look like I was trying to milk the out of the rain. I really didn't. <laughs> During the entirety of this, Dane continued work on his now six-part starters episode in hopes that releasing it would clear up his image and satiate his existing fans, who had been filling the comment sections on every video with requests following the end of starters episode three. And this was only worsened by an even larger bracket of fans asking for another Final Night episode. Then, after over a year had passed, Dane released Starters Out of the Rain Part 1, though the result was not at all as he expected. Despite the influx of comments, Out of the Rain was met with low views, lower view retention, and had its own comment section filled with Five Nights at Freddy's fans asking him to make another Final Night 4. Dane started to realize the majority of his views were empty in nature, and the majority of his subscriber count cared little about him or the originality he tried to present in his videos. Most viewers, whether subbed or not, were trend hoppers and just wanted to see him parody whatever source material they liked. While to outsiders, Dane's channel became lumped in with the gimmicky parody channels he tried so hard to distance himself from. So, upset by these circumstances, Dane released several tongue-in-cheek videos intended to capture the audience he had grown to hate and subject them to over-the-top and often disturbing absurd content out of spite. The most noteworthy of these was Outside In 2, a sequel to his most popular video at the time. Though this was created specifically to be as darkly humorous as possible, intentionally isolating younger viewers and acting instead as a video to be enjoyed by himself and his friends. Okay, so Outside In 2, that video was actually ca came up like after the first one was just made because I was so disappointed in it and how many views it was getting. And, you know, me and my friend Thomas were going back and forth and we were just talking about like the most extreme follow-up we could possibly make at the time. So he drew this little Demon Riley like picture and I didn't want any more attention drawn to the first outset and so I held on to it for a good while before I kind of caved in and just did it. Yeah, so this was the first video that I just made as an in-joke. I wanted the direction off the first video and I'm like, okay, fine. I'm just going to screw with people now. <laughs> So I wanted to do something a little different, and I made basically the most extreme, craziest, like, follow-up to Outside In out of, because I just hated the first one so much. Yo, you know what? People are gonna hate me anyways. I'll give them something to hate me for. On top of this video, he would create others making fun of YouTube itself, which had only recently unveiled its demonetization program, further growing Dane's vitriol. So, in response, he created the Outside In 2 Advertiser Friendly Edition. Much like with the re-edited PewDiePie trailer, this one also featured intentionally lazy dubbed over lines, reused footage, all with sarcastic and antagonistic overtones to mock the site's policies. She looks like she hasn't had a nap today. Let's go bring her to bed. Joy, it's time to go to bed. Don't worry, I'll tuck you in. That's a good idea. I should get my beauty sleep. I do believe you've broken the YouTube's term of service. You do know that tickling can be considered a sexual fetish. If you want to put a sexual fetish in your video. But having lost the gamble on Out of the Rain bringing in views and appealing his now restless audience, Dane felt the need to act fast to keep up his income, which until that point had been somewhat consistent. He reluctantly decided to keep producing the one-off animated movie parodies that had brought him so much success, while going back to work on larger projects in the background. But this time he set out to make Final Night 4, as the majority of his vocal subscribers had asked. But with his hatred for these fans building, he attempted to add as many jabs at the Five Nights at Freddy's fan base as possible to dissuade his fans from continuing to ask for more. But much like with starters, he'd hoped to make this video as enjoyable and high quality as possible for the sake of his own integrity, and to entertain those who watched his channel for him rather than just the source material. The goal with Final Night 4 was I was pissed off because when I made Out in the Rain one of my biggest projects ever, at clocking it at 71 minutes, uh, a lot of people just wanted a Final Night 4, and I was so pissed off. That I, and I really did not want to make a fourth one. I, but I felt like I had to because, you know, I was a people pleaser at the time. So I forced myself to make that video. And I, I still wanted to make it good. I didn't want to make some slap together joke video. I, I wanted it to be good. I wanted to show people, look, I'm tired of this stupid franchise. Let me be. Let me move on. Here, here's the most ham fisted message ever. Go. And no one got it. It's just everything went over everybody's heads. And, you know, I hate that video still because 
it's it's so venti and it's not even funny. It's just me being angry the whole video. As he'd hoped, these videos would receive a large amount of views, though only at a fraction of what his one-off parodies would acquire, which at this time consisted of his Good Dinosaur video released between Out of the Rain episodes and his Zootopia parody released following the finale. The former stands as one of his most popular videos to date, with over 8 million views. Though profitable, Dane continued to feel discomfort having these be his most viewed videos while larger projects he tried hard to perfect were often overlooked, even when these were also so tied to pop their source material. And within a month after having created this video, Dane would see a video on another channel called Undertale the Musical by El Hugony, and it was this that sent him into an existential spiral. This video is often cited as one of El Hugony's worst by audiences and YouTubers alike, though it remains liked by his own fans. And being a parody-based YouTube channel Dane was often compared to, he questioned whether his audiences viewed his own parodies as akin to this one, and whether his channel's stigma to outsiders had worsened to the same extent as El Hugony. As previously mentioned, he'd questioned this before, but upon seeing this parody, his insecurities worsened greatly. So this was during when I was making the Final Night 4 video, I came across... Oh, he's even making an Undertale parody at the time as well. So I came across like there's an Al Hugony like Undertale parody. I kind of do like it ironically now, but when I first saw it and saw like how like well received it was, I kind of realized, oh shit, the poor animation, the trendy characters, that's what I look like. And then I started panicking and I did not want to be compared to these kind of people out of like an ego that I had at the time. Following this event, Dane would withdraw almost completely from social media out of shame and cease production on any future parodies, partly out of embarrassment and partly out of fear for what reputational damage would come. Still, he held on to hope that with his audience, despite its fickleness, he would be able to have a platform to showcase his passion projects. Following Final Night 4, he then decided to start production on a real-life short film, something he'd almost completely stopped in recent years. And it would be this project that he would cite as one of his most effortful endeavors. It would go on to be known as The Video Zone. But with a lack of proper filler material between larger projects that the parodies had offered, and his now limited ability to express himself personally due to his withdrawal, Dane decided to start a series in mid-2016 known as DDS, or Dragon Dane Shorts. This series would be part of a larger form of rebranding Dane's channel would undergo, as he created a characterization of himself as a dragon. He'd had a visual representation of himself as a human in the endings of his older videos before, but this new character was intended to blend in with his others, who were primarily animals, as well as serve as a channel mascot. The channel icon and social media profile pictures were also changed to reflect this. Yeah, it was it was a turning point that I didn't want to do any more parodies. I wanted to... I got totally on off track. I wanted to do my Dopo series when I started. I was losing myself trying to please people at the audience. So after I saw that video, I started working on the DDS shorts as well as the video zone and even some like live action videos in, in between. And yeah, viewership dropped a whole lot, but I felt better um, morally not trying to milk things or not seem like I'm milking things. It gave me a better headspace. It felt like it didn't look like I was part of that crew anymore. The DDS episodes themselves would follow the character of Dane alongside his friend Dopo as Dane would attempt various frowned upon schemes to achieve online popularity, to which Dopo would express his displeasement and state the moral dilemmas involved. Bro, 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 wake up, wake up! Uh, huh? Dane? Oh, you're not gonna believe this. Recently, I've been experimenting with YouTube trends and I think I finally found my niche. It's gonna be something stupid, isn't it? Well, duh! Feast your seeing holes on this, beauty! You bought two Lamborghinis? Why? Oh, they're just tax right off Dopo. If I want to become a materialistic vlogger, I have to live a luxury. Oh, no. By the way, check out this. I got a Rolex. Okay, cool. Look at it. Yeah, I see it. Look at it. Look at it closer. I'd rather not. Look at it! Each of these episodes satirizes often ridiculed trends and genres, using Dane's character as a method through which to commentate on them directly, all while giving Dane himself an outlet to vent his frustration that had been building for some time. The topics of which included vloggers, Let's Players in Fortnite, storytime animation, drama channels, content cop, and so on. Although, these videos would also have an overarching plot involving the second lead character, Dopo. It's revealed in the third episode 
episode that Dopo is actually a character taken from an original series Dane wrote as a kid, which his DDS counterpart is constantly asking Dane to make. In fact, this is the focal point of that episode, as much of it is dedicated to talking about why it's taken so long to make, since original content on YouTube is almost never able to succeed. You know, something original can work. Well, that'll be the day. So, Dean, it's your choice. It's original versus parody. What you gonna do? Starters. Uh, oh, come on. What happened? It's going to be the series finale. I just want to wrap up this chapter of my life. Uh, I wanted to do the Dopa series um, since it started. And I wanted to do starters as like a testing ground to jump off of as, as well as called starters for a reason. I basically held off on them for a long time because, you know, that fear of trying to please people again came into play with the, you know, Final Night or the Pixar parodies. And a good chunk of the DDS series is just me, like, making fun of my channel the past two years and me hating every single thing, every single choice that I made at the time. And I tried to, I tried to show... The, I'm understanding my flaws through those videos that I know that I've fallen so far into this horrible content that I lost myself because, you know, early starters weren't like this. Fittingly, in this same video, he teases that another Starters episode, which would act as a follow-up for Typomaniac. The episode proceeding out of the rain, which had featured its own cast of characters independent of the other three episodes. And these characters had yet to be touched upon again. This would be worked on alongside the Video Zone and the new DDS episodes. Although, due to Dane having moved away from parodies, his channel begun to see a heavy decline. From mid to late 2017, Dane's channel would gain around 1,000 to 1,500 subscribers a month, and around 500,000 video views. While still decent by most standards, these numbers would pale in comparison to his numbers of the past, which would usually be factors greater. But for the short term, Dane appeared to be okay with this as he developed his next few large projects, starting with the Video Zone. On July 16th, 2017, Dane officially released the Video Zone, though this had an unintended consequence. On one hand, many who saw this video praised it for a lot of the unique effects pulled off within it, it and the camera work, but having been released long after Dane's channel saw a decline and with no source material to parody, this video would go on to sit with views lower than almost anything the Movie Unleashers channel had posted in many years. Today, it has 12,000 views after having been posted for nearly three years, and on a channel that sits with over 300,000 subscribers currently. It was this that would serve as his ultimate breaking point. While he had already known that his subscribers and casual viewers tend to gravitate towards his shorter one-off parodies rather than his longer and more effortful works, this showed him the extent to which this was true, and how integral source material had been in attracting his audience. As a result, Dane began to feel that even his most dedicated fans cared little for him or his work, and were simply subscribed for their interest in whatever brand he had parodied, whether it be Pokemon, Five Nights at Freddy's, Inside Out, or any number of others. Hence why the make more starters and make more final night comments had and continue to be so common. This, combined with his growing self-awareness for how parody channels were perceived to outsiders and the worsening site-wide problems from YouTube themselves, caused Dane's attitude towards nearly everyone to sour greatly. Following a behind-the-scenes video for the Video Zone, he would release a series of uploads more pessimistic in nature than ever before. Most were DDS episodes acting as subtle social commentaries, but the most on-the-nose video was his Cuphead in Real Life video, which was extremely vitriolic in tone and addressed the audience directly. You want me to say something funny? Something that you could relate to? Like something about the tutorial level being hard or the fandom being terrible? I don't need to delve into comedy topics. I'm already appeasing the mainstream audience for being random. <laughs> like, I've got a cup for a head. You don't see that every day, right? You're supposed to laugh, it's supposed to be funny. <laughs> Isn't this funny right now? Me with a cup head? Are you laughing yet? Are you laughing yet? The cup head video is basically me returning to parodies, um, quote unquote, as... <laughs> I basically made like the most passive aggressive thing that I could make because I freaking hated all the parodies that were being made on YouTube at the time. It would just be some surface level joke with like a licensed character making a silly face and intentionally stupid for the sake of being intentionally stupid. So yeah, the, the combat video was just passive aggressive, trying to be creepy on purpose, trying to be <laughs> very angry at the same time. 
Yeah, I have a lot of angry videos. The day after having posted his Cuphead video, Dane made a Twitter post saying he would be cancelling the next Starters episode that was midway into production. But this was short-lived, since in the replies, fans eventually persuaded him against doing so. Later, he stated that this was due to the poor turnout from Out of the Rain. While Dane also expressed that the Cuphead video hadn't been full of the same make more starters comments that he usually got, these negative feelings were part of a larger trend, reflected in a series of tweets he'd release every few months or so. With his revenue still dwindling long term, and with outside pressure, Dane decided to change tactics, and create a Patreon page where subscribers could pledge money monthly so he could continue to post videos without relying on trends that he felt would stigmatize him. In his Patreon video, he addresses a lot of his grievances directly, as well as mentions upcoming projects, one of which being the next Starters episode, and the other being a full-length movie. Last year, you must have heard all the news happening. Advertisers are pulling their ads, which cut everybody's pay like 70%. YouTube's also been putting in a whole bunch of heavy restrictions like no swearing, no conflict, no parodies, or else demonetization. And even if you comply to these demands, it doesn't seem to work. Oh well, you could just file for appeal and then your videos will be re-monetized, right? No, it doesn't work like that. Even if one of your demonetized videos gets re-monetized, you will not make the same amount of money you did before it got hit. It's less a stable job than it was before. So I did the sensible thing and just focused on passion projects, AKA videos that I know nobody would watch. And I wish more people would watch them. They're some of the best content I've ever made. And to be honest, I like moving my channel in this direction. Cause if I just continue to do relevant topics, people are only there for the relevancy of the topic. It's just there for a fast result, nothing long-term. I was hesitant to use a Patreon because I really knew a lot of people didn't like me and I, it would look more embarrassing if, you know, I tried to ask for stuff. I hated using Patreon. It was such a mess. I, I tried to give people like the most they could get for their bang for their buck. I only charged them like four times before I closed it and I gave them like eight animations including a starters episode. So I guess that's all right. I don't like asking for money. I want my videos to be made for fun, not really for profit. I just want to, I don't want to lose myself in the money thing again. It was just that I had a big push from, you know, family members with that. He would only charge his patrons four times, and considering this, there appeared not to have been enough of them to make a significant contribution to his revenue. So, unsurprisingly, it would be closed in August of that same year. However, on February 8th, 2018, Dane would release the long-awaited Typomaniac Starters sequel, going by the name Rare Candy, which would end up outperforming its unsuccessful predecessor, as well as most of his other videos since Final Night 4. But unfortunately, it didn't reach the heights of his original Starters episodes or his older viral parodies, and traction on it died out fairly quickly. Following this, however, he became more active in posting DDS episodes, going as far as releasing weekly uploads during his seven months spent active on Patreon. However, with his finances still unsustainable and his current problems with his audience remaining unchanged, Dane decided to take a gamble. Around this time, an indie game known as Baldi's Basics in Education and Learning was seeing unprecedented popularity, and many Let's Players and parody channels were finding success making videos based off of it. So Dane saw this as an opportunity, and decided to create a video about it, but with one experimental factor. Alongside it, he'd develop a DDS episode that would connect directly to the Baldi parody in order to engineer a method of getting incoming viewers to branch out into watching his original content. The accompanying video was called Make More Baldi's Basics Animations, referencing the abundance of comments that would often come up whenever he'd parody a certain popular property, and a fear that this would continue with Baldi's Basics as well. It was created to be released if his Baldi's Basics parody saw success, and unsurprisingly, as with most of his one-off shorter parodies, this was the case, but to a much larger extent than many would have imagined. Within a week, it acquired over 1 million views, prompting the release of the accompanying DDS video. Well, Dane, you done it. You made a video that finally went viral. In it, he goes over many of the problems his channel has faced, and how the Baldi's Basics parody video will now attract a new obsessive audience that will only serve to repeat the cycle and while worsening his current problems going forward. You just said the video went viral. Yeah. Does that mean you're gonna start making my series now? No, I can't do that. You realize what kind of can of worms I opened up. I can already see it. 
Make more Baldi animations. Do another Baldi's Basics animation. I'll get them again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again! It's gonna be like that for the next five years if I'm lucky! <laughs> you know what? If you get this way from always jumping on a trend and it doing it successful, then why do them? I don't know. That's the YouTube way. <laughs> oh! Look who's here to join us! Oh, you gotta be kidding me! I told you, he's going to be following me for the rest of my life now, and I deserve it! I committed a crime against humanity! I did a stupid parody animation! <laughs> yeah, pretty much. The reason I thought I had an inactive following at the time was because I had such long upload gaps between the f FNAF stuff, so then when like I posted the starters, people already forgot about me. So I tried to do the experiment with the Baldi video where... I'd post one, and then I'd post one related to the DDS right away, and then sh show them more and more DDS. Try to, like, you know, sneak them in, try to get some bleed over from a viral video. Uh, it was just an experiment. It wasn't trying to do anything else. With this turn of events, his experiment appeared to have gotten mixed results. His DDS video following the Baldi parody sits with over 420,000 views to this day, making it his most popular DDS episode, but most other DDS episodes sit with an average of 30 to 50,000, implying that very little of these viewers stuck around, since these were close to his numbers prior. People did stick around, but not as much as I expected, but I did get some pretty good viewership from that. It wasn't... It just wasn't the numbers I was pr projecting. Nobody really stuck around after the Baldi video. It was... I expected a little bit of bleed over. There was a little bit of bleed over, but I don't think anyone came long term. I think most of the people are just people that found starters years later. Despite these issues, his Baldi video would continue to grow exponentially, reaching a staggering 18 million views today, making it his most popular video yet. Following it, he would post two more sequel videos, this time acting as tongue-in-cheek jokes that ridiculed the fanbase and made fun of the source material akin to the sequels of his other popular parodies. Although much like what had occurred with those videos, Dane's jabs within it were lost on the audience and went largely unnoticed, leading these two videos to see popularity that would only increase the audience that Dane had sought to avoid. The Movie Unleashers channel gained over 70,000 subscribers in total from the first Baldi video, and the comment sections of the videos following these would become filled with requests for more Baldi's Basics content, as Dane had feared. Following the release of the third and last Baldi's Basics video, Dane uploaded a DDS episode called Cynicism Sells, which summed up his current situation in an allegory by comparing original content to lemonade and parodies to cranberry juice. And I think we should try elsewhere. We've got quite a bit of competition. Nah, everywhere's like that. But here's where we got the upper hand. We're the only lemonade stand here. Everyone else is selling cranberry juice. Who even likes cranberry juice? It's so sour. So how many customers have you got so far? Just you, but you don't even count. Hey, do you guys sell cranberry juice? No, sorry, we are a lemonade stand. Okay, bye. Wait, we do have cranberry. Shh, no. In it, Dopo opens up a lemonade stand, remarking how everyone else in his area only sells cranberry juice. Despite this, they didn't get any customers and were forced to put food coloring in the lemonade to disguise it as cranberry juice. And despite being well liked by all the customers, no one buys the lemonade even when it's revealed to be what they were drinking the whole time. People will start trying the lemonade. I know nobody tried it today, but maybe if there's nothing else in their stand, people will start to try it. But they like the cranberry. No, they don't. They like my lemonade with red food coloring. It won't change. Where is everybody? I don't know. Pretty hot day. I'm surprised no one's buying anything. But they're still lining up for the cranberry juice. Lemonade! Lemonade! 50 cents a cup! Lemonade? Uh, weren't you two? It's just been lemonade with red food coloring. Following this, only one more DDS episode would be posted before the series went into an inactive period which continues to this day, over one year since the last episode. Around the release of the last few DDS episodes, however, Dane would create a new series, parodying the Mario franchise. Although its execution fell more in line with that of starters, with an original story and characters while only borrowing the aesthetic of the Mario games to create a wider curb appeal without relying on a short-term trend. I created the Goomba series to try to make a follow-up to starters, kind of. Because starters was... It was so stressful to make. Rare Candy definitely took a toll on me. I wanted to do short-error animations after that. 
and a parody series would have been pretty good. So it'd be like starters, but like way shorter episodes and you could watch them episodic, but you know, it's not, nothing's really lost if you don't watch them in order kind of thing. My goals were to try to just get like a, like a decent following while I could do my proper stuff on the side. And it, it performed decently. It performed better than my DDS stuff. And I do really like the Goomba stuff, but I did burn out on it hard and it, I lost my passion really fast with it. Dane created seven more of these videos as well as a season one compilation video. But this series has also gone inactive with the latest episodes having been posted in late 2019. Aside from this series, however, he would also put up an April Fool's Day special featuring characters from all his series in a crossover intended to mock crossover parodies, which were common for channels such as Futuristic Hub, a creator which as mentioned, Dane is often compared to. Wow, that was quite a good April Fool's video, wasn't it, Inspector Gadget? You can shut up now. What is the point of the Minecraft references? Well, Minecraft animations are usually heavily criticized for being shallow pandering. But didn't you just do the same thing? Well, come on, I made it very obvious what my intentions were with the video. Just because you're self-aware doesn't make the flaws go away. Instead, it points them out to be more glaring. Come on, Inspector Gadget. It's all about expressing your creativity. But you're just copying different characters from other franchises designed by somebody else. Despite its intent, this too would go on to be seen as unironic and lumped in with the other frowned upon crossovers Dane had attempted to mock. As a response, Dane changed the thumbnail, trying to make the message more apparent before giving up and amending the title, adding a baldy part four suffix that wasn't there previously and changing the thumbnail again as well. Ironically, the video doubled in views in the time after having done so, even months later. Okay, so the April Fool's video from 2019, I was actually really, really proud of. I wanted a lot of people to see it because it was like the most passive aggressive animation I could make just railing into, you know, the the people who do the big like crossover videos like Baldy X FNAF, this and that. Just like complete soulless stuff. I wanted to, you know, just totally rip those guys a new one. And I, I put it up and it didn't really get any attention. People thought it was a real video. And I got a little irritated and I changed the thumbnail like once or twice with it. One where I was very passive aggressive and how I could have named it. And then after it didn't like pick up any traction, I just named it Baldy 4. Because people were still asking me for a fourth one. Heck, people are still asking me for a second one even though I've made four. It's ridiculous. Yeah, the intent was to rail into those futuristic hub type guys but it you know it looks a certain way that means it's the exact same thing as that video even though it's an april fool's video it's really ridiculous it's the thumbnail and title that really gets you anywhere on the internet it's so ridiculous whatever <laughs> aside from this there have only been two parodies released since the baldy videos one based on toy story 4 and the other based on minecraft both of which were also ironic and the content of which is surreal and hard to describe Buzz. I think it's time to show you Bonnie's new toy. She made him herself. Why am I alive? <laughs> That's amazing, Woody. Captures Generation Z perfectly. I know, right? Very cool. He also released three starters related videos, two of which were full episodes, one which continued the story from Out of the Rain, and one featuring all new characters intended to align with the release of Detective Pikachu. The third was a joke video, recreating the prior episodes with the only starter Pokemon being Charmander. This was in response to Nintendo announcing all previous starter Pokemon except Charmander would be cut from the newest line of Pokemon games. In this video, there is also an Easter egg where lines are shown quickly, mentioning that Dane has been refocusing his priorities on creating a full-length movie as 
of late. Other than this, the only remaining content from Dane's channel has been random oddities, some of which may be familiar to subscribers of this channel. I am the Blue Mike Wazowski. Welcome to my rant video. There's a lot of things I'm pissed off at. Today, Dane's channel sits, scarcely active while its creator spends his time on future projects, with a small dedicated subscriber base left in the dark wondering when he'll return, and what content he'll bring. All while Dane hopes to eventually enter the film industry, though having accepted that doing so on YouTube has long since become impossible. To onlookers, Dane's channel remains infamous, known for the work he's most ashamed of, while not being able to showcase his better projects to a wider audience, despite his best efforts. Had he continued to make one-off parodies, his channel may have been able to continue growing exponentially, but for better or for worse, Dane's desire to produce content he considers to be of sound quality holds him back, and he continues to work silently in the background on passion projects, in hopes that one day they'll reach their intended audience.